Be shalom Israel, most high in Christ bless. My name is AYB, this is Little Sanctuary. And we are in the midst of the feast of the memorial of the blowing of trumpets. And uh, the new moon or the first day of the seventh month ethanim. I have a small document here I want to share with you with regard to what the oil is in the Bible and the point out the misunderstanding of what the oil is. Uh, the Roman Church and her offspring, the Protestants and their offsprings, the non-denominationalists, the evangelicalists, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Seventh-day Adventists, and on and so forth, Baptists, what have you. They have pretty much adopted the notion that the oil is uh, the Holy Spirit, but the evidence, or well, the fruit, is emotions. I'm going to show you that is erroneous and heretical and way, way, way off the mark of what is actually the oil which these wise virgins in this parable actually uh, had and kept in themselves. Matthew chapter 25 goes into this uh, parable. Let me read it. Matthew 25 verse 1 through uh, 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now the fact that they were virgins indicates that they were believers. Okay? I just want to throw that out there because uh, it's not referring to non-believers. These virgins were quote-unquote believers uh, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him this is the the beginning of sorrows, the time of uh, great tribulation that we're entering into. Verse 7, Then all those virgins arose, all ten of them, and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. This kind of uh, exemplifies what happened with uh, Noah and the ark. The door was shut. Afterward, 11, came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Notice they were believers. Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Let that sink in. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh.
yes, we are saved by faith, but not faith alone. You must have the works to show for it, the fruit. The fruit is the works, that's the oil. The oil, the Holy Spirit is the oil, is the obedience and the humility in observing what God's will is revealed for us in the Bible. Amos chapter 5, we're going to look at what God uh, views as acceptable behavior for believers and unacceptable behavior for believers, so-called. Amos chapter 5 verse 21 through 23, I hate, I despise your feasts days. Notice he's, he's calling them your feast days. They're not his feast days necessarily. They are man-made feast days. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Today we offer our bodies as living sacrifices in service to him. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. So these offerings that are being made by these folks here, which are believers, are vain. They are not the offerings of the will, of the heart. They are uh, insignificant uh, material offerings or uh, emotional offerings. Okay? Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. So, a lot of this gospel music in a lot of these uh, communities sounds good to us and may inspire a little bit of joy after a while or a trance <laughs> hate to say it but a lot of times it, it, it turns out to be a trance rather than actual joy from from the Lord in a lot of cases Matthew chapter 15 verses 7 through 9 ye hypocrites well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying this people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips but their heart is far from me but in vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men where is the problem here traditions and doctrines of men. We got to make a distinction. We got to see the difference. That takes study. Psalms 45 verse 7. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. These uh, wise virgins were anointed with the oil of gladness from within. Not something they had to drum up or jump up and down or mumble, blah, 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 you know, in order to get... As, and to uh, <laughs> somehow offer as evidence to the community, to one another, and to the world of God's uh, approval. That ain't happening, man. That's, that's uh, I hate to say it, but it's, it's really foolish. Acts 10, chapter... 10 of Acts, verses 34 through 38. 
Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Notice it is the word. That word, 37, I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Why was God with him? He went about doing good. He kept God's commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24 and 25. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Acts chapter 7, verses 51 through 55. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law. Notice the Holy Ghost uh, is being resisted by them and being likened and referred to as the law who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it ye do always resist the Holy Ghost received the law and have not kept it ye do always resist the Holy Ghost the law. You resist the law. Which, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, this is James, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Acts chapter 4 verse 31 And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're filled with God's word. And with boldness, obviously. The proof here is in the pudding. I, I don't really have to uh, say anything more than what the Bible is saying here. And when they had prayed, the place where was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God. Let's continue. Acts chapter 2, verse 4 through 11. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What utterance? What utterance did the Spirit give them? If you look at verse 11, the wonderful works of God. 
we're going to find out where those wonderful works of God are contained. That's what they were speaking. They were speaking. The Holy Ghost gave them utterance, just as he did. They spake the word in verse 431. They spake the Holy Ghost. They spake the word of God. Here, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They spake in other tongues. And what were they saying in those other tongues? Were they mumbling? No, they were speaking the wonderful works of God. Verse 5, and, they, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. It wasn't a bunch of babbling brooks, in unintelligible mumbling. They were hearing the word of God, the wonderful works of God, in their own language. What is that? That's a universal translator. I'm sure you, if, if you're at all familiar with modern science fiction, you know what a universal translator is. Verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? There were Parthians, there were Medes, these are all Jews from these different countries because we've been scattered into all nations, the Jews have, that is. Elamites and the dwellers of Me in Mesopotamia and in Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontus in, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Serene and strangers of Rome Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. They all heard them speaking in their own language, the wonderful works of God. Now, what are these wonderful works? Where are they? What is it that they were speaking to that, that these people, these men of these different provinces and nations which came to Jerusalem to uh, celebrate the, uh, I believe it was the Pentecost. Uh, let's see, in verse uh, chapter 40, verse 5 of the book of Psalms. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to us word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. I would declare and speak of them. They are more than can be numbered. The wonderful works of God is our deliverance out of Egypt. The splitting of the Red Sea. The manna the quails, the water from the rock, uh, the Ten Commandments, the uh, destruction of the rebels, okay, uh, the, 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 the many plagues which God brought upon the Egyptians the Passover uh, and on and on there are too many to list they more than can be numbered many O oh Lord my God are thy wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which are to us word they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. 
those are the wonderful works of God. They were speaking the word of God. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is to be filled with the word of God. It is, it is not evidenced by emotions primarily. It's evidenced by the way you live, the fruit of the Spirit. By their fruits you shall know them. That's the evidence. Conclusion. From these precepts, we can all see that the oil is the Holy Spirit. Do you agree that the oil is the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit is the Word of God or His law? The oil, therefore, is the keeping of His law, His statutes, His commandments, His ordinances and precepts. Yes. Emotions are involved as an end product. Those times of refreshing, those joyous uh, occasions and celebratory gatherings that we have as we uh, observe and keep God's law. Emotions are not the primary evidence of the anointing of the Holy Spirit and neither is mumbling uh, as is taught in many circles today jumping up and down gyrating mumbling rolling on the floor yelling or running around is not the evidence of the anointing of the Holy Spirit the evidence is a holy life lived in accordance with God's will as stipulated clearly for us in his holy word okay and his law takes on various aspects and dimensions for our lives example we have the moral law which deals with our relationship with him we have the civil law his civil law which deals with our relationship to one another his dietary law which deals with what foods we are allowed to consume and which to avoid. His ceremonial law or his holy days which we must observe and keep. And lastly but not least, his holy dress code for us as believers. We must dress modestly, men and women. We must dress according to our own gender not one like the other or the other like the one men should not be wearing women's clothes and women should not be wearing men's clothing there were originally 600 plus laws in the Bible but Christ fulfilled approximately 200 of God's laws which applied to the temple service, the Levitical priesthood, the sacrificing of animals, and uh, tithing. Now, there remain 400 plus laws, okay, 400, on the books, so to speak, which we are responsible to learn, observe, and an act in our lives religiously. If we are not doing so, then we are as the foolish virgins who put off the practicing of God's laws, thinking they were all done away with by Christ's sacrifice on the cross. But they were not all done away with, and the foolish virgins thought they could wait until the last minute and try to borrow credit from those wise virgins which did follow God's commandments to the best of their understanding and ability. This, of course, sounds like heresy to many today, but it is not heresy, and on the contrary, it is sound doctrine. We must keep God's moral law. 
we must keep God's civil law. We must keep God's dietary law. We must keep God's ceremonial law. We must keep our God's dress codes as stipulated in the Bible. Study to show yourself approved unto God. For by your fruits you shall be known. And you do not want to hear our Savior say, Depart from me, I never knew you. What does it mean to be known of God? It is when one is walking diligently in his revealed will for us in the Bible. That is the 1611 authorized King James with Apocrypha and the 1569 Biblia de los in Spanish con Apocrypho. These both contain 80 books, not 66, not 73, 80. Galatians chapter 3 verse 25, but after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Does that mean the law has been done away with? The entirety of God's law? No. Revelations chapter 4 verse, uh, rather 14 verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 22:14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. The schoolmaster was God's old law of sacrifice which taught us how exceedingly important holiness is to God. How? By the spilling of billions of gallons of the blood of animals to temporarily placate his anger at sin in us. We must stop sinning, no matter what it takes. And we must sacrifice our wills for his will in Christ. All praises. That's basically it right there. Just a few pages of, of uh, precepts. Uh, yeah. And if you have any questions or uh, want to make comments to the contrary or, or critique this, please feel free to do so. Uh, the love of God is that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. 1 John 5 and 3. This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. You should have no other gods. You shouldn't pray or worship uh, the Queen of Heaven or angels or dead people shouldn't shouldn't uh, pray to or worship statues or objects or anything you know uh, it's, it's pretty uh, plain you have to study though okay happy feast of the uh, memorial of blowing of trumpets, happy new moon, and uh, thank God for another month in which we can serve him with joyfulness and gladness for the abundance of all, where none of us lack any necessities and even some of our wants. Okay? All praise to the Most High. Shalom, peace be with you.